Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger. I'm an artist sculptor and today I'm going to show you how to <clears throat> make a dragon. And I actually made this dragon about a week ago and he's actually sitting on a rock. We're going to do something like this today. We're going to be working in polymer clay and this is, um, the brand is uh, Sculpey 3. That's what we're going to be using. And I'm trying to focus here. There we go. And we're going to start off with um, a mound or kind of like a stone or so for the dragon to be sculpted on. I'm just basically forming this little shape here. I want it to be a little bit taller. And I'll press it on the table here. And that will flatten the bottom. One thing about the polymer clay is you do want to knead it before you start. They call it conditioning. It mixes all the ingredients <clears throat> up inside the clay so that it cooked, uh, bakes properly when you bake it. Okay, so we got that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of clay here. This is going to be for the dragon's body. And you know there's all kinds of ways to sculpt. I mean you can you can just take little bits of clay and build it up to form a figure. You can carve it. Um, you can do all kinds of things. The reason why I show this way is because there's so many people watching and we don't know where they're all from and, and what they know and what they don't know. So this way they can learn fairly easily. Everyone can learn fairly easily. So it's called simple shapes and basically I uh, form simple shapes out of clay and uh, assemble them to form figures. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating the body of the dragon. So this is going to be the neck and head. There we go. And this is going to be like the body part, which would be considered the torso. And then we're going to keep on rolling the clay here, like this. We're just going to keep on rolling it, and this will be the tail. So just try to keep it uniform. You see, like that. And just roll it gently between your hands. Just trying to adjust the camera. I'm the cameraman, I'm the sculptor, I'm the teacher. A lot going on here. Okay. So I'm gonna roll this a little bit longer here. I wanna try to keep it fairly uniform. Okay, and then I'm going to set this on top of the mound with the thickest portion or the torso right on top and just sort of press it into place. I'm going to bring the neck around like this. And just press that gently into place there. And then I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this tail, but we're going to do something. So I think maybe something like this position here, and then bring the tail around like that. So he's sort of on the rock, but not completely on the rock. Like that. And so I'll press this into the, um, we'll call it the rock from now on. But when you press, you don't want to like squish it, you know, and mess it up. 
that's the whole idea of doing the body like that, rolling it first, is because then you come out with a nice smooth um, place to start from. So this would be nice because we have we have the rock, you're sitting on the rock, but we also have this ear space here and ear space here, which tail gently comes out and curves outwards. Okay. I'm gonna uh, just pull this up close here, so. so I can sculpt his face. And I like my dragons to be um, friendly. I'm not, I'm not looking to make them mean looking. I have made dragons mean looking before, but I think most people, at least the people that um, patronize, you know, and actually purchase my art, tend to like dragons that are um, friendly. Or neutral anyways. I'm going to take uh, this paintbrush here and take the back end of the paintbrush to create a little nostril right here. And then I'm going to take this paintbrush, which is a little bit bigger, <clears throat> to create a uh, eye socket. Next, I'm going to take a very small ball of clay. It has to be pretty small to make the eyeball. I'm going to put it in there like that. And then I'm going to take uh, maybe a sharp knife, like an X-Acto knife. And uh, <clears throat> all I have to do is put a line on the eyeball to give it the look of a pupil. There we go. And then I'm going to take a noodle of clay, a small noodle of clay, And I'm going to put it above his eye here. Like that. And then I'm just going to blend that eyelid or eyebrow into the top of his head. Like that. And you see, he's, it was you know that's very simple actually to to do. It may take you a minute, but you'll get it. And uh, and then um, I'm going to take a little ball of clay, maybe about that big, roll it into a ball, and then I'm just going to flatten it slightly. And I'm going to put it right here for his ear. And I can take the back of the same paintbrush I used for the eye and just press it here to define the ear a little bit better. Like that. You can change the appearance of the expression on its face by raising or lowering or just changing the um, the eyebrow. I'm just going to raise it a little bit like that. Also, can just take the back end of a smaller paintbrush and add an ear hole there, just to add some depth to the ear. Okay, next we're going to do start working on his legs and feet. And so to do that, 
I'm going to roll a little ball of clay to start it off. It's kind of a starting point and part of the reason why is when you roll a ball it kind of smooths it all out. And then when you roll other shapes it just sort of holds that smoothing. So I roll the ball and now I'm ro rolling an oblong shape and as I roll it I kind of roll it so it's cone shaped. Like that. I'll make it a little bit longer. This will be his thigh, and this will be his um, lower leg. And I'll just bend it in half like that. And apply it to his body where I want his leg to be. And I'm going <clears> to... <throat> do that, do something similar with this front leg, it's just going to be um, just a, a small oblong shape like that. And apply that to his body there. To do the toes, um, it's sometimes just easier to, um, you know, you roll a little ball and then you roll it into um, a noodle like that. couple ways to do this. One way is to the, um, I kind of got misshapen there. Um, one way is to take the back end of like a paintbrush or something like that. The clay is a little sticky and you can actually put it on the, the brush like this and just press it gently into place. It's probably the best way to do it because our fingers, <clears throat> although they are wonderful tools, as you can see, I'm mostly using my hands and not a lot of tools here. Um, they are big sometimes and cumbersome and it's hard to get them into spots. So let me just put that on there like that. And then just try to spread the toes out evenly and, and uh, now you know what for the first time I've been sculpting with polymer clay for a long time but I never had these tools before these little ball tools they say you're supposed to wet them first. This is actually the very first time, right now, as you can see, right now, that I'm using this, uh, these types of tools. And we'll see if um, it's something I like. I'm not sure the point of the water, but maybe it just makes it go on smoother or something like that. Okay, so we're doing the toes here. We're gonna do the front toes. that way a little bit. To, uh, push down the toe to release it. And, uh, I'm still not sure about these ball tools, but sort of coming in handy. Just trying to get this toe in position here. It's, uh, you know, it takes, it takes time.
I'm just using a variety of tools here, you know, this, getting these toes in uh, position here and then uh, sculpting them in. Kind of got to go with whatever works. It's, it's nice to, uh, when you're doing tiny work like this, it's nice to have a, a combination of tools to work with. I'm just blending, then blending the uh, the toes into place. And sometimes just uh, taking your finger and uh, patting gently an area that you were just doing some detail work, will, it will take away some of the roughness. And you can use uh, you can use a paintbrush with some alcohol on it also when working with polymer clay. I'm going to go ahead and do the back leg. I'm going to back leg and front leg on the right side. Try to line it up with the. Uh, rear leg on the on this side so make sure that they're lined up it's a little bit easier here because there's um, there's some space to work lining the front leg up with the uh, front left side leg with the one in, on the right And then get in. I got some room to work with, so I'm just going to lay the, the uh, toes on now with my fingers as opposed to the brush. But now you know that you can, uh, you know, use the, the back end of a paintbrush to lay the toes on. It's gonna lay all the toes on and then uh, go back and blend them in. This is a sculpting tool I've been using for many years and I'm very used to it and I use it a lot for blending. It's not exclusive to me at all. You can find these, you know, fairly readily in the art store. Um, and you can buy a package of them or you can uh, you know, buy them separately sometimes, it depends on the store. So there we go. And, you know, of course, when we finish it, there'll be, uh, you'll have to go back and, and uh, smooth it wherever you want, of course. All right, next, uh, we're going to do the scales on the tail going up to the head. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this and then I'm going to speed up the, uh, the camera so the, the footage so that uh, um, because it takes a while and uh, it's not hard to do and so I'm going to show you that but before I put that, any scales on I'm going to make the spade for the tail so I'm going to start with the ball and then I'm going to roll it applying more pressure to one side so that it makes comes to a point like that. I'm going to squeeze and kind of pull out 
to create more of a spade shape like that. And then I'm going to kind of pinch it to create a, 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 a ridge there. So it's that shape like that. And then I'm going to just apply it to the end of the tail, pressing down gently. And since the tail kind of comes this way like this, I think I'm going to just take the tip of this here and bend it that way a little bit. Just so it's nice and flowing like that. You know, you want to pay attention to form. It's very important. Okay, so we're going to start putting the scales on. The best thing to do is just roll little balls, roll them into noodles, so they're like that shaped. But when you roll it, just roll it a little bit more on one end, and then you get you end up with a point. I'm going to start by laying this first scale going onto the spade, so it blends in nicely. and keep all the scales about the same size. Now, if you're wondering that the tail coming off the, uh, the stone like that, um, you know, just out into the space like this, it's okay. I mean, it's going to be, you know, the whole thing is going to be somewhat fragile. I mean, it's not going to be something you give to your kids to play with, I wouldn't think. Um, but that would still be fairly hardy. I, I, I have been sculpting with this uh, Sculpey 3 for a while. I mean, actually, a pretty long while. And, uh, I've done all kinds of sculptures and most of them are smaller like this and most of them are very detailed and I haven't had any problems with them breaking. They're very hardy. I'm surprised. I am actually surprised about that because not all clays are like that. So when you're watching me do this at high speed, pay attention also to how I not just that the scales are going like this, but that they're coming up, they go around and come up and then they're they're going down the middle of the back and, and that way, just sort of pay attention to how I'm doing that. And then also, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you'll be able to um, go to the cog and slow the film down if you want, okay? So just go to the cog wheel on the lower right by the YouTube uh, um, logo and you'll see that. There, you click on that cog and you'll be able to uh, slow the film down. We're going to speed it up. Back now um, at regular speed, and I'm just kind of laying the last scales up on the head. And probably take them up a little bit further to uh, maybe this will be the last one. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's the last one. I'm going to blend that in. To the uh, to the head, and uh, <clears throat> so as I was saying, the scales start out on the top of the tail here, and they slowly go 
kind of, you know, going along with the ridge of the back. So they're changing what side of the tail and body they're riding on just to make it more natural. And uh, now we'll make the wings. And the best way to make wings, um, to have both wings to be about the same size, is start off with uh, two balls of clay that are the same size. It's too small, so it's got a little bit more to it. Um, so now what I'm doing is uh, <clears throat> I'm creating a wing. I'm, I'm kind of flattening it. I'm uh, and I'm pulling on it to create, you know, a wing. Um, and I'm, I'm creating, by pressing into the clay, I'm creating a little bit of a ridge here uh, just to give the, the wing uh, some definition. And I'll just lay it on here and just see how that, see how it works. And then I'll make another wing uh, like it. Oops, I got the ball here, that's right. So um, I'm just pulling. I'm trying to make it the same size. Obviously the ridge has to go on the opposite, opposite side for the other wing. You can't make both wings exactly the same. They have to be um, mirroring each other in a way. Let's we'll see how that looks. Maybe make this a little bit longer. And that's fairly close. So this will go on, go on the other side. So we'll go ahead and lay this on. And I'm putting it just basically where the leg joins, the front leg joins. And then blending that into uh, the neck and shoulder. And you can position that, of course, anywhere you want it. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe, uh, actually maybe connect it with the top of the knee of the, of the uh, dragon. Like that. do that over here as well, blending it into the shoulder and neck. And then sort of just bring it down to the uh, to the knee just so it connects there. It might make it maybe a little bit more um, sturdy, hardy. Okay, so we're getting we're getting pretty close to the end now. I, I did make an adjustment to the tail and just uh, pulled it up a little bit um, just to give a little bit more action to the body. Um, on the other on the other wing in the back I uh, did some ribs. Um, I'm not going to do them in the front but um, basically it's just a noodle of clay blended in on the sides. Um, so you should be able to handle that if you want to do that. And then um, as far as the finish goes, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, Pearl X pigments. 
And for this dragon, I mean, you can do all kinds of colors, you, and you can just use a, a paintbrush, a small paintbrush to apply it. Um, but for the for this dragon, I think what I want to do is just um, is just highlight certain parts of it with this uh, antique bronze. So what I do is I get it on my finger and then just maybe go over the scales like this, the end of the tail. I did that on the dragon I did earlier this week that I showed you at the beginning of the video, um, and I really like the look. I'm just going over the scales here. Maybe the um, tip of the ear, the um, eyebrow, along the nose there. Maybe a little bit on there on the feet just to highlight them. A little bit on the wing, on the edge of the wing. I just think that looks really, really nice. And then um, let me find a small paintbrush here. I'll put some bronze on the paintbrush and just uh, touch the eye like that. So it's like the like a black dragon. I think it's really, really pretty. Um, and like I said, if you wanted to put colors, there, the Perlex comes in a lot of colors. Um, this, this is actually a, a, a duo red-blue, kind of dances between the colors. This is violet. Uh, this is green. So uh, there's all kinds of different colors you can do and it can make your dragon really pretty. And then when you go to cook it uh, or bake it, you want to bake it at 275 degrees. Uh, for 15 minutes per quarter inch of mass and uh, and so just to give an example this dragon the thickest portion is the stone he's sitting on it's about an inch thick so you would cook this dragon for about an hour um, <clears throat> so that's it and that's how you make a dragon if you like this kind of content, um, I do a lot of videos along these lines. Um, I have other uh, dragon making videos. Um, in fact, I'm going to put the playlist in the um, information part of this um, of this video down below, and it will also be um, on the video itself above, so you can click on it if you want to see the playlist. I have a lot of videos on how to make dragons and that sort of thing. Um, and if you're interested in this, this uh, kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Um, please rate the video and, um, and comment. And if you have ideas for a video that you'd like to see, um, put that in the comment, as, comment section as well. I thank you for your watching and thank you for your support and have a great day.